Then my advice to the kids, just leave the violence alone, bro. You know what I'm saying? Go to school. Go to church, bro. It's cool being a square. I love being a square. I used to be a gangster, bro. Big old gangster, bro. In the gym. I, like, I'm, I'm cool with being a square, bro. It's okay, bro. It's okay to go home. Chill. You know, sit back. <laughs> Watch TV. <laughs> Play the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, first five, like, I want to go to first five, but you know what I said? You know what? It's too much going on because I'm grown now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why am I outside? What am I outside for, bro? 41 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But see, what, what happened was I got all my 20s and 30s taken away from me. So my mind, like, I could get up and go right. I could go run 20, 30 minutes right now just take off running. Because mm -hmm. my mind's still yeah. young. You yeah, see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So now I done, I done developed. I'm growing now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I, I left so young. And in my mind, I'm like, man, I'm still 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I first come on, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? <laughs> but, but now it's like, damn, Q, you getting old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't be at no club, bro. You need to be at a bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, hey, bro, it's just, it's just a growth thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? For the I tried to leave it alone, but I just couldn't do it. Don't want my back on the loan, just what I put into it. It took a step to begin, now I'm a foot into it. They say it's far from within, I had to look into it. Now I'm illuminated, a whole book into it. Jumped in the water with greatness and set my hooks into it. Me and the man in the mirror was all it took to do it. And life's window is clear, now when I'm looking through it. I'm trying to see something. I cut mine on. Uh, oh, you touch yours off? Yeah. All right, you do. Hey, so what we, what we talking about? Shit, life, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, so just have a conversation, man. I, court, court usually lead it. That nigga's a good facilitator, man. For real. <laughs> he was that great. And he missed it. <laughs> nigga had Zach them fighting and shit. Talking about organized. That nigga misses. Boy, that nigga was so messy, boy. That nigga was so messy, boy. I had him fighting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. You had a fight. Exactly. Vic, now, you might use Zach. me to help you manipulate back in the gap. But oh, yeah, I did that. I did. Yeah, we did a you, lot of you were the facilitating. One, yeah. <laughs> I bet y'all won't fight. <laughs> you the one made it all happen. Yeah, that shit was funny as hell. You just knew who to put where to do it. Mm. That's it, man. That's it. Quit cool look at them niggas, bro. <laughs> Make that fight. Boy, I talked to Richard, boy. Who is he? Say, Mr. Quinn Brown. Mr. Long. Hell no. <laughs> Say, goddamn crazy horse. <laughs> boy, I heard that name so long, man. That nigga, I said, man, dude, crazy. Hey, Richard was a bad motherfucker. Who are you bro. talking to him? Like, about, about two months ago. We all Man, we had some good. dogs on that, bro. Man, just me and, me, hey, me and, me and Fat Boy be talking about that all the time. You and G. Smurf. You, Tater, Tater, Dan, See, if we would have Jordan. If we would have, if Ernest, the Ernest Millers, and if them niggas would have stayed playing, we would have been straight. We would have been strong. Ernest, man, I ain't gonna lie. You know who really gave me the game though? Howard Green. Yeah. Boy, Howard was a hog. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> man, I ain't gonna lie. Boy, bro. I'm telling you, bro, I'm gonna show you how it go. And that nigga running. Like, man, where nigga, this is summer. What are you running for? <laughs> nigga running. See, when, I, when, it, when it was time to get out, get out, boy. How was just running over them niggas. How yeah. was rough, boy. Little old bit of something, too, boy. He was just rough. Project Baby. Man, that's all Raven produced, bro. I remember when somebody put up a post about who was one of the best athletes to come through Raven. Okay. And they was right. like, receive a quarterback. And they went week by week talking about each position. And somebody said something about my name, and I remember sitting there thinking, I was like, man, I'm about to make a post about this. And pretty much what I said is, I appreciate the comment, but honestly, if it wasn't for me being able to see what I saw as a kid, right. <laughs> then it, 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 was, it wouldn't be no example. Right. As a kid, I remember being at the fence, you know what I'm saying, looking at y'all out there playing, looking at the, the, all the athletes that came through Raven, they, they just set the bar. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, shit, this is how it's supposed to be. Man, picture, picture, picture playing up on the Brian Lawson, 
Samson. Bro, when I tell you, that that team right there, they yeah. were good, boy. You had a bunch. They really, we supposed to win all the way, played Evangel. Man, we was on Evangel, Nick. Like, it was 2 nothing at halftime. They yeah. won state. We beat Oak Grove. They won state. We played OCS. Yeah. Yeah. Beat them. They yeah. went to the yeah, championship. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm playing? Yeah. West Monroe with Brady James. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Got beat. But we ain't lose by number like 10. Yeah, yeah. Brian had like 570 yards passing. That boy went crazy. My yeah. Dude. Man, I remember when we was in junior high, bro, how Coach Barton to come yeah, down there. Up. How Coach Barton to come down there. Not Coach Barton, Coach Brown. To come get us. They come get us. From high school. And the junior. thing was, it wasn't like he was coming down there to get us to come start. But just the fact that he came out of there to come get you. Yeah, it made you feel like you knew what it was. Like you knew what it was, like you was a part of something special. Right. Just to just to go in that stanky locker room and smell mm -hmm. like piss, sweat, and everything. All the dudes yeah. in there talking, man, what you doing in here? Yeah, just to put you know the helmet saying? on the shoulder pads, bro, that was like a privilege. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like when I sit back and I think about that, Man, when I got to Baltimore and being around Hall of Famers and, and that environment of, like, toughness, I'm thinking to myself, bro, this ain't nothing. Right, right. <laughs> I can't feel. Right. 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 The same thing y'all yeah, doing here, cracking jokes. Yeah, yeah. This ain't nothing. This, this ain't, ain't nothing, bro. <laughs> I'm home. Right. I'm home. Then yeah, you play with a hard defense. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. So, man, you been But I came from a hard town, though, yeah. bro. Yeah. Especially on the defense side. We used to blues. Man, I remember one day, bro. Man, it was everybody on defense. I say, listen, we going to all hit Edgar. When the ball <laughs> snap, don't nobody hit nobody else. Hit him. Yeah. Man, we lying up. He talking noise. I told y'all, y'all ain't going to. Man, as soon as they say, damn, say, mm, 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 every time he got up, they were on him. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I ain't gonna lie. He got up crying. Man, I'm, crying gonna tell, I'm gonna tell, bro, I'm gonna tell mom on you. You feel me? But then was the times that, as a big cousin, I was like, all right, he ain't, he ain't gonna quit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And they just made him stand above the rest. Now he know, in his mind, okay, it's gonna be different. Now I gotta go and do what I need to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, I couldn't really get to him because he was on the whole line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, imagine, imagine. Boy, when I get to junior high, when I'm 11, you know, I'm, I'm a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I baby. walk in there, T in there with his shirt off, tater, he boy, right. he boy, like chest T. high. T, hey, T, man. <laughs> T, T Curry. T Curry. T Curry. Yeah, yeah. boy yeah. had traps and everything, yeah. tattoos already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good firm do rag on. What? Glasses on, too. Glasses on, too. <laughs> so, so I'm watching, I'm watching y'all. I'm watching y'all in front of me and, and Coach Brown come down there and pick us to come up there. And then I'm hearing people saying, man, you better get a stick on your head and make voice because uh, home games, they pee on everybody, pads in the sweat box. <laughs> so I knew then. I'm like, I'm finna get me a stick, a 12, 13 or yeah, not. Yeah. So when Coach Brown calls somebody, I don't care if he, if he had Ratliff and, 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 and Jordan up there. I'm finna get in. Look at that, freshman, look at that little freshman. Yeah. Look at him. You ain't ugly enough to play defense, <laughs> but I'll put you on all line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like, I like my defense player big and ugly. We're trying to go in that sweat box. Bro. Nah, man, no sweat box. No sweat box or something, Sid. Yeah, for real. You know what? It's, it's crazy because now the culture is, we got turf fields, we got field houses, all this stuff. It's a saying that says, privilege becomes invisible to those who have it. Uh, that culture ain't there no more because they don't know what it's like to try to tell Coach Brown why you doing up down. Coach, your stickers right here. Yeah. What are they right there? And move over in them. Right. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you got to go to a sweat box and you working out in the weight room. Yeah. You can't see because in the sweated in there and the mirror fogged up. Right. You slipping. But we wanted that. You know what I'm saying? We wanted to go up there and get in that yeah. just to play ball. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now it's more of a, a glamorous thing. Uh, but that's that's like one of the struggles of the world, right? Edgar, we, we try to do better, make it better on our kids. When we do that, we kind of take away struggle. Right. So then you got to learn how do I put them in, in adverse conditions where they're going to have to find their way out of it. Because you built in the adversity. Mm -hmm. You built in the hard part. So we make everything too easy on them. Or you making it better or you spoiling them. You know what I'm saying? So 
Stuff like uh, getting them into learning instruments, making them do puzzles, right. mowing the yard. You gotta find ways to discipline to, 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 yeah, yeah, without yeah, giving them everything. Yeah, right. Cause with, with that then you miss, you miss the discipline of working for something or, the, or what you, what you had you built on your way up to getting it. Mm -hmm. If you take that away from where well, ain't no building going on. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to say, man, I'm on the bench. How am I gonna get on the field with his jaw? I, like I'm, I'm 13 years old, 5'9", 240. Everybody else six three, three hundred pounds. Yeah, How am I right. gonna get on? Where well, you right. get on it by? Every time they line us up on their shoot, get oh, your yeah, get yeah. your little ass in there and run yeah, it to them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> After right. a while, you gonna, you know what I'm saying? You gonna make a name for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You then he already to. know who you is, where you come from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's it. That's both sides. He gotta be seat throwed off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's something I never forget, Brian. When I got up there, I tried this because I'm, you know, I'm a smart, manipulative little guy. I asked, did he know Bo Anderson? I asked, did he know Quinn Bryant? I asked, did he know Edgar Jones? You know, Coach Bryan told me, never heard of him. What he was letting me know was, ain't no legacy stuff. You ain't gonna get in on no name. You gonna have to build it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I had to get it. I had yeah, to get it through the fire. Balloon. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that boy felt stupid. <laughs> and leading up to it, he like, thinking like, "This gonna get him right here. here. <laughs> this gonna get him right here." Boy, boy I got get y'all. <laughs> <laughs> boy, if you don't get up and don't get up on that line, never heard of him. Never heard of him, boss. <laughs> yeah, boy, that's crazy, yep. boy. Uh, hey, man. So I hadn't done our proper introduction yet. I'm sure most of you can tell <laughs> that we are back with another episode of the Lit Code. Uh, we told y'all that our sit down, our first sit down via Zoom with our cousin, franchise Brian here, Quentin Brown, uh, would be better suited uh, in person, right? So you can feel this organic energy because this, this is from here. I don't have memories without these two in it. Cause they was already here when I was born, and we was all there. Like you got through into it after school. Even though we was going to different school, everybody come to grandma house, and then you got to learn a picking order. Yeah. Led by franchises, mm -hmm. and that that mean a lot Leader. of good, <laughs> a lot of ugly, a lot of in between. Yeah, but you boy. you about to learn on the fly. You know what I'm saying? So we have them here. We are here at Fresh to Death Stables. AKA Anderson Forms, whatever you want to call it. Every last one of us. Bow House. Bow House. <laughs> Bow House. <laughs> Uncle Bow House. <laughs> on, on the other side of this tree line, we grew up on 42 acres. Uh, and we was taught work. We was taught, we had fun, but we had the hard way. You know what I'm saying? We taught how to hunt. We taught how to sit still and be quiet. That's one of the main parts of hunting, right? Nice. If you wanted to come to you, you're going to have to sit down and shut up. But sometimes, if you really want it, you're going to have to chase it, especially nice. if you done wounded it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So uh, we learned a lot of life out here. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of what we was doing was molded right here. This is not the field, the famous Edgar Jones tractor tire field, <laughs> but it's about this size. Uh, even maybe a little bit further behind us where Edgar Jones would take an old tractor tire that my daddy had and flip it. One end, back to the other. Play a game of pickup with us, jump on his bike, ride it seven miles the other way to go back home. This is where that was built at, right here in Rayville, Louisiana. Uh, again, this is Franchise, my partner Edgar Jones. We here in Rayville, shot by none other than Don the DJ. Shout out to you. Uh, and we're about to have this episode, man. We're about to talk about life, you know what I'm saying? Quint journey, you know what I'm saying? The Edgar's journey, mine's. How we uh, stuck together through adversity, came back out of it as, as grown men, fathers, you know what I'm saying? Like, from, from knee high to this. So welcome back. We, we appreciate y'all for uh, listening on TikTok, watching on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, however you take it in. If it's one second or if it's the whole hour, we appreciate y'all, man. So let's get it. Boy, you got good with this boy. boy. Good, boy, great, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> you need to be a preacher, boy. Boy, <laughs> boy, good. <ain't> it? <laughs> it's like another one, Randolph. Randolph. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, get that one, one episode. He gonna try. He gonna try to get me to my man. You should start it off. No. <laughs> You just set the you just set the stage too high. Yeah, I'm gonna just fall in. Yeah, I'm gonna fall in. You got real professional with this, boy. 
Thanks. Of you. We try to we try to get better. We try to scale it right. Uh, man, why you so hard on us, bro? Talk about that. No, y'all was y'all was y'all my little cousins. If I ain't gonna be hard on you, else gonna be hard on. Yeah. yeah. We ain't had no other bigger cousins. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Me and Nick grew up together, but Nick Peanut. You know what I'm saying? It was me, Peanut, then Nick, then me. Yeah. And going out there, you know, man, Nick was hard. Nick was rough, too. <laughs> Bucky Bill of John yeah, Deere right yeah. now. <laughs> right. Pick up a train. Only thing I ever <laughs> seen get Nick, right, Nick mine right when he was little was that goose. Yeah. That Mr. John yeah, Wall had out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. <laughs> Mr. John yeah. Wall had a goose to get you, boy. Yeah. I think, you know what I think it was, though? I think it was me. Like, like y'all was kind of caged in the country, ducked off. I'm in the city, well, in town, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So I'm around different. I'm seeing different, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Y'all not seeing what I'm seeing. But I just feel like, you know what I'm saying, if, if I ain't do it, who else going to do it? That's yeah. why I, was, I had to be rough, bro. You know what I'm saying? I seen at early ages stuff I ain't supposed to see. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The, the, the drugs and guns and, you know, just being through that. So yeah. when I finally decided, hey, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to do, but I knew I had to beat up on y'all and show y'all how to do stuff because y'all was coming right up under me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We got a lot of stories, especially. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot, bro. We ain't going to talk we about it. <laughs> you feel me? But you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I couldn't really get to this one like I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, yeah. we grew up together. All of us grew up together. Like, man, this was all this right here. This yeah. is where it all started, bro. You know what I'm saying? Being taught how to hunt. Uncle Bo just throwing you in the woods. Show the camera. Turn the camera over there. <laughs> Done. Turn the camera over there. <laughs> yeah, because they need to see. Man, Uncle Bo used to just throw us in this, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just throw us to the woods. You know what I'm saying? Tell y'all come out of there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do yeah. what you got to do to survive. You know what I'm saying? So... Man, basically, bro, him raising me, you know what I'm saying? My my goddaddy raised me stern and firm, so. I mean, I think Elgin and I talk about that a lot with the newer generation. You know, people just want to label them or say they bad or whatever, but I always say that if you grow up in the jungle, whether you a good <laughs> a good jungle member or a right. bad one, you got to have some jungle on you to survive. Right. So I think what you're saying is your, your job was to put that jungle on us because uh, Bo can't come to me, <laughs> come with me to school right. and sit in that lunchroom when they get to cracking, I got to be ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If there's a fight break out, win, right. lose, or draw, I got to be ready to at least right. have a jab on me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. To, to be able to get out of it. Right. My, I'm younger than y'all, but sometimes the bird's eye view is the best view mm -hmm. because I, I can see it happen without me necessarily getting caught up in it too much mm -hmm. and know how to move. Right. right now, Now, I can take what I see here and lay my own law down right. with the people that's with me. Right. So I, I learned a lot from, from watching, but at, at certain, before you left, I had to be in it too, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had to be in it. I just was, my daddy is the disciplinarian of the family because he's the, <laughs> right. only, he's right. the only male yeah. on that side. And we don't have uncles on that side. Mm -hmm. Y'all do, I don't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. He the only uncle. So some of the, some of the reason I wasn't in stuff is because we knew yeah, but if we get caught <laughs> courting the widow, <laughs> Bo gonna kill us. Yeah. And I don't mean that as a as a, a figure of speech either. We literally believe. <laughs> you remember we was moving something on the on the carport one day, Edgar, it was yeah. a fire cabinet or something. Man, Edgar trying to push it, both of us putting out all our might. And daddy standing at the steps, he said, Y'all been smoking that shit. <laughs> no, sir. If I ever catch y'all doing it, I kill you. I move out of my way. And that boy took with one arm and shoved that, that cabinet over. You know what I'm saying? We really felt like we knew we had to answer to him. It wasn't right. even no question. So a lot of it was him being there. That you know was what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just straight up and down. That's who he was. Yeah. It came from anything manly, Uncle Bo. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that, that camera pan, everything out here. As, as a as a 65 year old man now. Yeah. <laughs> by by his hand. Matter of fact. Shout out to him. He across the track, remodeling my house right now. He yeah. been gone since five. You know, he Still just country. he just <laughs> one of them. Still, you know, he built different. Yeah, bro. he built different. Yeah, he is. Uh, and that allowed us to evolve, right? Because we could, like I said, we could take what he what he had, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. some of the stuff he didn't have time for, like this mental side of things that we get into, right? Mm -hmm. So he built us with this foundation, and then we we pour out all, all this other stuff we done figured out and learned. Mm -hmm. And man, you make a bad mother, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> because we we built from that. And then we come on into. And that, let's not let's not forget about Uncle Ed too now. Yeah, hey, we we you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> Uncle James. Okay. Like it's it's a Uncle lot. David of, Uncle David, David Jr. Uncle David Jr. Yeah. Sure. Uh, man, I, I man, I yeah. Uncle David Jr. Uncle Yak, I yeah. have Uncle Boo Boy, right. Uncle Dip. Yeah. Yeah, the Captain Blackjack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all them gave you different. Uncle yeah. Dip gave yeah. you this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Uncle yeah, James yeah. gave you this. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. My my whole profession right now, is yeah, cause, cause Uncle Boo laid that law down. Yeah, yeah. I was being able to go off on the pipeline. Uncle Dim let me know it's all right to move off somewhere and make some more money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and the B player too. And the B player, yeah. the player, the trucks, all that yeah. stuff. Come from you know the guns. Yeah, you know, wall full, full of money. Them boys yeah. always had good wall full of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uncle Will, I can't forget Uncle Will. Yeah. Uncle Will, Bo gets his country stuff from Uncle Will for real. Uncle yeah. Will. Had 300 acres of soybean farm since we've been little. Right. And and cows, and on the weekend, uh, before we had weight training program, yeah. hey, hey, court, I'm gonna need you up by 4 30. Yeah. Gotta go toss some hay at Uncle Wills. I'd be like, boy, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get the hay out the field, on the trailer, to the barn, stacked up in the barn. If somebody pull up to buy some, you gotta stack it back out the barn on their trailer. Yeah. And he gonna feed you and probably give you ten dollars. That's one of <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, but that's, and make, make a couple dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but that we was we was really built on that. Uncle Ed. <laughs> Edgar and I just talked about <laughs> this enough. the other day, man. <laughs> Charisma. Ain't nothing else to be said about it. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what I got from Uncle Ed yeah. for real. Charisma and and like, like he just said, being a man. Yeah, you like you go over there. It was this tight little nice t-shirt on, on yeah. with Wrangler. Yeah. Curl hey, dripping. And, and ain't going to never not look no man or woman right. dead in the eyes while he's talking right. to him. Yeah. Lean over. Huh? You, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> the boots. And this is this what all these guys we just mentioned. One thing about it, all on work for them. Right. You know all what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't care about any imperfections because ain't nobody perfect. All our daddies got ways, but everybody... Work for them. Yeah. They weren't they they weren't begging nobody. Right. Yeah. They wasn't if if we needed food, we go hunt. Yeah. Literally, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We gonna we gonna clean some. They got some rabbit. They got some deer. Right. We we clean them at grandma's house. Grandma, y'all come back over. She made biscuits and, and sir. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know that, boy. I need, we need to get up right after this. For real, man. Make some so, biscuits and salmon patties. And shout out to her because, I mean, she raised my daddy with with. Uh, Really, seven sisters if you count in Aunt Joy. And in this day and age, yeah, in this day and age, we'll be, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We know what can possibly happen. Pure yeah. number, you know, yeah. You know what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah. She, she raised a, a grown man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Grandma. Yeah. So, uh, we had a we had a semi-viral clip last time, so we we'll get we we'll get into the story. We talked about how we grew up. Uh, Quint blazed the trail for us as far as football went. Right, uh, all everything, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The definition and epitome of middle linebacker that's what it was. The, the size he is now, he was dead at what, 14 <laughs> for the black bias. <laughs> Look, so, so by the time he, he wears number 52, hey, everybody else got a certain kind of cleats. Quint got the zip up cleats, he spat it, he got, he got the Douglas. His sleeves rolled up with, with the bands up here, tatted up. You know what I'm saying? He, he basically did what he wanted to do out there. Not because he was rambunctious, because he was producing. You know what I'm saying? So he, he, we saw scouts come to see him. You know what I'm saying? So we knew that was a possibility. Now, Edgar follows up, and then I come after that. But Quint led the trail, blazed the trail for us. Uh, but he, he also hit a detour, right? Uh, and we talked about that some. Where he was, where he ended up being incarcerated for 17 and a half. 17 and a half. 17 and a half years. Yeah. Uh, been out how long now? Since May, May 5th, 2019. May 5th, 2019. Yeah. I'm trying to do the numbers now. I, I got you. <laughs> but, it's, but it's important yeah. because, because somewhere along the line, you knew how to navigate in there, right? Yeah, I had to. But then you had to come out mm -hmm. to this new, supposedly free world. 
yeah. and it's and it's it's, it's different. different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So speak to him about that transition after doing that much time and then coming to this. Oh, uh, you mean hold up? You mean as far as me coming out of jail? Yeah, coming out into, into another like yeah. I mean, really ain't nothing changed. Like it's the same. Like me personally, the reason why the way I stay out here and free now, yeah, like. We get phones in jail, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just, like I told y'all, I'm still on the don't get caught with the cell phone. Uh -huh. Meaning, you know what I'm saying? Don't get caught slipping. Because mm -hmm. if you got a cell, you in a six by nine cell in the dormitory, right? Mm -hmm. You got a cell phone, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't want to get, it ain't too many places you can put the cell phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you all, you got to have that mentality with don't get caught with the cell phone. Don't get caught up in the fools. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't. Go back to your old ways of doing the old things that you used to do. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, me seeing, me coming home seeing y'all grown. Yeah. Y'all ain't little boys no more. Y'all daddies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It made it an easy transition. Yeah. Because it's my turn now. I need yeah. to do this. I need to be on mine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it was an easy transition. I mean, you know, family. That's that's one thing we always had was family. Yeah. We ain't never went away from that. I had y'all my whole joke. You know, everybody ain't fortunate enough to call their cousin. Hey, I need some money. Send it. This dude here. Hey, man, I got the pictures of the dogs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coming to our fights. Yeah. When we had boxing matches. He there. He right there up the road at Southern. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was easy because I had family enough. You know what I'm saying? And when I came home, I still had family. I, I lost a couple soldiers, yeah. a couple prayer warriors. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, hey, that, that come with the territory, you know? So... So you say that was easy. Talk about what was the hardest part about being in prison. Oh, uh, not being able to do what you want to do. Getting that taken away from you. Not being able to, can I curse? Mm -hmm. Not being able to, to shit when you want to. Eat when you want to. You know what I'm saying? You got to wake up at a certain time. When you go to prison, that shit, like what you see now. This is why I wore this gray and white t-shirts. This is what you're going to have on with some slippers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it's work call, you're going to get your ass up at 6 in the morning. You're going to go out to that field line. You're going to get a whole uh, slang blade. People going to be on horses like you see behind us with AR-15. You're going to walk from here to start. Yeah. Till you get to where you get to the cut, eat a corn, soybean. You know what I'm saying? Right. You picking everything you eat. You know what I'm saying? So... It's, it's a struggle. All yeah. together, it's a struggle. But I played sports. I, I, I was boxing. You know, they got tackle football in there. So you kind of keep yourself going. Like, when it's a baseball season, it's baseball going on there. When it's football season, so you, you kind of stay sane. But, you know, you got to be a strong individual to, 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 to do the time and come back out here and be able to be that same person. Yep. And, and you went in, for the ones that don't know, you went in at what age? 19. 19. Yeah. How many years were exactly were? Seventeen. Where you started off at? Uh, Winsboro. I've been to like forty different detention centers, four different prisons. You know what I'm saying? And then you know what's crazy? The, what the crazy thing is, the way we grew up, they doubted me when I went to prison. That's what really motivated me, cause I used to hear, man, he ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna be able to do it, man. Yeah. That's they, they ain't even they ain't built like that. But guess what? was the, 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 the one of the rawest ones that ever did it <laughs> in prison, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, just not bragging on it, but I held my own. You see what I'm saying? Because of the men I was raised around. I knew it was zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. When I went in there, my uncle Bo do not play, so it's zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not going to let nobody play with me. I'm not going to do all that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm going to be a man. I'm going to leave. I came in a man. I'm going to leave a man. That's mm -hmm. what happened. You know what I'm saying? So. To Mike. Oh, uh, you mentioned you mentioned us being daddies when uh, you got out, and congratulations to you on on your two young men now. Can I ask a question before y'all jump over there? Yeah. All right, you did seventeen, right? Yeah. Like I know a dude in, the, in Toulouse got like thirty, and I know he he probably got to do the whole thirty, but got to do a portion of the time. Like, how do you even like prepare your mind to even like? Like, set your mind to prepare yourself for that time. You see what I'm saying? Ain't no like, preparation. When you, like, when I when the judge told me 25 years done, everything after that was, I ain't hear nothing, bro. 
I'm telling you what God love. When that man said, Quentin Brown, you sent us to 25 years, hard labor. Everything after that, I ain't hear nothing. So you can't prepare yourself. It's just like if you get in the tub with these dudes out here. You can't prepare yourself if they up a gun, right? You got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it, it's a, it's a spur of the moment thing. You got to just do what you got to do. Only the strong survive, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and doing it day for day. Like I told them, I used to do five years at a time in my mind. Like I locked my mind. Let me get these first five out the way. I know I got to do 20 because I done gave five back. Let me do five years. I get them five years out the way, I got to do five more. Because I'm steady fighting through appeals trying to ask him, man, look, man, I need to get back in court. He, they know. Yeah. It ain't happening, though. You know what I'm saying? So you got to do what you got to do, work out, play on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Write music, play dominoes, watch TV. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never watched the stories out here yeah. till I went to jail. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We watch the story. You got to watch stories and stuff. But it's just like, bro, you can't prepare yourself for doing no, no beer like that. I was just running to my partner the day. I say, man, my partner went home, bro. He left me. I was at DCI. Mm -hmm. He went home. He left. One you know, my best bud. Now he in Angola doing life right now. He ended up coming back on two murder charges. Mm -hmm. Wasn't gone two years, bro. Come back on two bodies. So what happened was he, he walked up to me one day. I said, man, what you doing back in jail? He said, bro, I want to show you something. He said, man, pull your rap sheet out. I pulled my rap sheet out. Mine got May 5th, 2019. This was like a couple months before I was finna go home. He said, you see that, bro? He said, man, look at this. He pulled his rap sheet out. You know what the out day said on the Life. Ain't no numbers. All it said was L-I-F-E, bro. You feel me? So it's it's a different ball game, bro. When you playing with these people out here, want to you know be seen, be on the you know flexing, being on the ground, trying to stunt. But when them people throw them numbers at you, what you gonna do? Your girl gonna be gone. Your partner's gonna be gone. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's gonna be a whole different ball game. Just like now, we just were talking about the scenery, the land. Mm -hmm. But when I came home, what none of this stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I was out here, what none of that right here, bro. Now look at the trees and grow. You ain't never seen the trees before. You know what I'm saying? Like my mama yelled, I'm like, where this tree come from? <laughs> First day I'm looking at our house. You know, like when we live, we young. I'm looking at our house like, man, mama got a nice house. Man, the first this on everything I love. When I came home, Smile. man, the house looked at like a little box, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was because my mind hadn't grew. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But it's the same exact house I grew up in. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, bro, just a lot, bro. Can't change that. Yeah. <laughs> it's perspective, for yeah. real. Your, your perspective changed. Uh, think about all the dudes. We talked about a lot of men, Coach Brown and all them earlier. When we see them now, they don't look as big as they looked to us back then. You Coach know what I'm saying? Coach Smith still look. Wait, wait, he gone. <laughs> yeah, but, but even right. still, now, now right. you looking them more eye to eye. And you, right, right. you know what I'm saying? Uh, that feel we talked about. It used to look, that walk used to seem so long to me. When right. I walked it as an adult, though, right. it really wasn't that, yeah. it wasn't that far. Uh, what I just heard you say was, was something I like to say all the time, man. You live where you live. You might live in in uh, Canton, Ohio, or Frisco, Texas, right? In the house you stay in. But where you really live at, each individual only really lives in here. That's mine, right. So once you defeated that part, the mental aspect of it, you was able to do the time because they couldn't change the mind. Right. A lot of people, once once your mind shift, and man, as you think, you are. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So whatever you telling yourself in your mind, you, if you telling yourself, I ain't gonna make it through this beat, yeah. you ain't gonna make you it. Ain't. Yeah. And at the time, you actively not making it. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? When you shift that mindset, don't say I'm gonna make it. While you're on that, then you're gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? So for anybody dealing with anything, not just because because prison can be. Eating bad, it could be a drug, it could be anything, right. you know what I'm saying? Your it, hell could be anything. Yeah, the shock of your <laughs> mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's some people in there got way better outlooks on life than some people that been free the whole time. Right. Yeah. You see some cats come out of there and in five months they millionaires. Right? Because they getting to see they seeing it outside looking in, they like nah, they what, think that's hard. What it is, they appreciate the small shit. That too. Yeah, because that's taken away from you. They <clears> value <throat> more in the yard. Being able to wash dishes, being able to, you know, 
play with their kids and see their kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Dudes, and that's why this, this, this dudes that, like you just said, they're most successful because the things are taken away from them that they love the most. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, we say pri privilege becomes invisible to those who have it. Yeah. So uh, I just talked to to uh, to one of my uh, in laws about that. Uh, you can't. We can't fuss at our children and say you ought to be happy that you got six pairs of shoes and you ain't got to share a bed with your uh, room with your brother and all that. Mm -hmm. That's not their reality. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't know that having their own room is a privilege because it's normal to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the people out here taking all this stuff for granted, running water, like you said, being able to use the bathroom when you want, being able to pull up to a spot and order off a menu. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, people take that stuff for granted. And then you got somebody who hunger for it. Perfect example. Foreign exchange students. Edgar went to college. I went to college. Them students from Africa, Asia. I, when they come over here, they don't play. It's business. It's yeah. Business. My yeah. my first my first roommate. Shout out to Nikolai. Nikolai Khan from Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. He said he said this dorm room is like the Taj Mahal. We got we got running water and bathroom. <laughs> Stop. <Right. laughs> right. like, you know what I'm saying? Like right, man, man, what? Yeah. I get to go to the cabin and eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we we taking for they outwork us every yeah. time. Yeah. I talked about they're putting yourself in adverse situations on purpose. It's gonna build you. Uh, but whatever whatever decision you made, you had to take what you had from that decision, mm -hmm. and then make the best out of it in your mind. Cause if not, it's rough. You're in a place where <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could it could get rough. So uh where I, where I was going with, with it earlier is uh fatherhood. What impact has that made on you? What was what was that like to see your son come out of his mother and look in your eyes and know I made that? That's me. Uh, that that really made me just wanna settle, sit all the way down. Ain't no time to play because if if I'm out here playing, how he gonna be great? If I ain't here to lead him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you no know, kids soak everything in. Yeah. Like my little boy starting to watch me now. You know what I'm saying? Starting to do little stuff that I do like. He mimicking you. Yeah, head butting me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I gotta be a reflection of, of, of who taught me, and he got he need to be he need to see how it was really be, be, be you know to be raised like a man and. I, you know, just watching y'all grow, raise y'all kids, bro. I, I just really, you know, I'm appreciative, you know, to even see that, bro. Because I ain't gonna lie, when I was in there, my worst fear was 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 two things: me dying in jail without having no kids, my mama leaving my mama out here with nothing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, uh, her dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not 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 having not having nothing out here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so you know that was like that was like one of the biggest things when I left. You know when I when I when I was in there, just me not leaving a legacy out here for her. Yeah. To you know get up and be want to be motivated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's that was the best feeling in the world seeing my son, both of my sons. You know, come out the womb on earth now, healthy. Yeah. You know, so I'm blessed, bro. So, what you feel like you learning in fatherhood? If one thing you really learning right now, what would you, what would you say? Oh, uh, learning how to to raise, nurture. Like I was there. Yeah. You know, I feed my baby bottles. Wake up every night. Got a lot of dudes can't say that about their kids. Yeah. We ain't gonna speak on them, you know, the, the dead, but <laughs> yeah, we just being real. Like we wasn't raised to where we ain't gonna take care of our family. Yeah. You know, they mine. You know what I'm saying? So. It's gonna always be that, you know what I'm saying? They minds. I love taking care of my kids and raising them. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna raise them how I want to raise them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna raise no dumbest. We raising yeah. kings. I have a daughter. We raising queens. We ain't raising no dumbest. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you know, you want your kids to be better than you. Yeah. That's all I want. If I could get that, I'd die happy, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like right now. This is the Uncle Bo, Ed, your daddy. You know what I'm saying? If they go right now, they go, they know one thing. Courtney got it. Yeah. Ever got it. You see what I'm saying? And I want mine to feel the same way when I'm gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I want to feel the same way about my kids when I'm gone. So, you know, that's the important thing, bro. Man, talk about, kind of go back for a second. 
When we was growing up as kids, you was known as that guy in yeah, high school. That guy. What's that guy? In high school, <laughs> football player. <laughs> right. You know, you getting all that attention. You got scouts, you got coaches. I remember after one game, I think Old Grove. Yeah. Old Grove coach came up to you, hugged you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they was gonna try to take keep you out of Old Grove. Like dealing with the, like having all that attention, how was it? dealing with that and then two here's another question for you because really I don't think you really probably wanted to go to Southern really no I did there was other schools pursuing you so really you having to go to Southern that's somewhat kind of like starting over as a new guy how was that experience oh uh, the first question being that guy you when you when you grew up around Dudes that play ball and that was good. If you raised around people that's supposed to be good, you want to be good too. If you saying greatness, you want to yeah. be great. You know what I'm saying? And the guys that I was, I came up under, they was them. It was more than one that guy. <laughs> yeah. We had like seven of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Brian Lawson, the Samsons. You know what I'm saying? Bo Sumlin. Like you, they was them. You know so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just came. It, it came. It came like it just came natural, but it came easy. Uh, me transitioning to Southern though, my mic on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, me trans transitioning to Southern. I, w- I had actually signed with ULM. You remember I signed with ULM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, my ACT was down, so they sent me to um to Gulfport Community College in Gulfport, Mississippi. First day I get the <laughs> shoulder pads. But I'm like, oh, they put me in pads. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the yeah. first day, like the next day. Like, I went and got all my stuff situated. Dude, the coach was like, hey, next day we went with tomorrow, we wearing pads. I'm yeah. like, what? I go in the dressing room, brand new pads, cleats, everything, whole setup. I put on the gear, go to practice. They put me on special team, man. You know, I had to put on. So it, it had got so serious on special team. Well, I went to hit these little dudes, and they were like, hey, bro, <laughs> put them over there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because I ain't you. I'm used to going a hundred. I ain't used to miles. going. Yeah, I ain't used to going fifth of this light. Yeah. What's light? You know what I'm saying? I'm finna catch you. I'm finna crack back you. I'm finna do whatever I got. Whether it's practice or not, cause I'm trying to get on the field. You know what I'm saying? So, what happened was they was trying like they had two linebackers. They was both seniors, mm-hmm. and they was like, "Well, look, we gonna let you start at defensive end." Mm-hmm. And they a lot of that, like I ain't lined up at defensive end because I we had two dogs in high school. Yeah. But when I did, I just played around and made a couple plays. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I think GA got hurt one game, and I ended up like the coach put me there, let me play. So they was like, "We sent you play defensive end. We got two senior linebackers. We ain't gonna let you play linebacker, but we gonna start your defensive end." I'm like, man, I've been playing linebacker since I can remember, but yeah. that's all yeah, I know how to do. That's what y'all recruited me for, and the guy that recruited me ended up going to Vanderbilt right up the road. So I was like, hey, man, y'all gonna let me play linebacker. I'm finna go home. So they big me. I ended up going, you know what I'm saying, going home. I was like, man, I'm gonna leave. I ended up going home and shit. Southern call. You know, Pete Richardson was was on yeah. me since I was a freshman. That dude used to come to games, send letters. And, you know, I just was like, man, I ain't going to no black college. I ain't going to no, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, but... So that's how I turned out. They ended up going to Southern. And that's when I, you know, stayed there a couple weeks. I ain't even get to practice or nothing. Ended up coming to jail, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And then you end up going. Was it a coach that you knew at Southern? Oh, uh, so I ain't know nobody but Pete. Bumpy. Oh, uh, it was a guy named Bumpy. But I don't want to speak on him. Because, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? We <laughs> yeah, we know what he yeah. did. But. Yeah. You know, Pete Richardson was like, he was there for my, that dude showed me tape from when I was a freshman. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of big to him. That's the, and you know, Grambling right up the road, I could have easily went to Graham. Even when I went to jail after two years, you know, being locked up, you know, uh, Doug Williams them came up there with like, we sent a letter like, man, we'll, if y'all let him come home, we'll give him a scholarship. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. For real. Yeah. So, uh, they, ain't, they ain't even, they still ain't want to let me go. Yeah. So. As a first offender, never been in no trouble. Not a speed ticket or nothing to get 25 years. Nobody was hurt, nothing. You see what I'm saying? They said it was an example made. It's a black man from another town 
We know his daddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We're finna make an example. That's what they did. So yeah. I never put myself in that position no more. To let a man make a decision on my life? Nah. That ain't gonna never happen no more. Well, going through all that you went through, what, what would be some advice you would give to the youngsters that's probably listening, right? That's making some decisions, doing some stuff that just ain't taking them right down down the right road right now. It's, it's time to sit down. Oh, uh, everything's starting to unveil now, you know, starting to reveal itself, where we come from, you know, <laughs> we, we the people. Mm -hmm. We the chosen people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The color people are the chosen people. Like, we just gonna be real about it. And I'm not racist or nothing like that. I mess with all nationalities. My best friend is a white guy. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? But we just being truthful. Like, we hurt ourselves. And what I mean by we hurt ourselves, we put ourselves in a position to where we can't grow. We can't learn. Because we don't like to read and write. We don't like to read. Black people don't like to read, bro. All you got to do is sit down and apply yourself and read and open your mind to understand that it's bigger than being in the streets, bigger than, than, than killing people and, you know, trying to slide on this dude and slide on for what? You're killing one of your people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We stronger together. Whether you know of the pyramids and stuff, man, man-made. We built that, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you know, it's just, a, it's, it's, Grow, learn, and just understand that, bro, the streets gonna get you in jail, bro. They gonna land you in there, and ain't no coming out when that judge hit that gavel. You know what I'm saying? You gonna come out of there, Tyrone or Keisha. And one of two things. Like, you gonna come out of that bitch, like real shit. You gonna come out of that bitch, a man, and you gonna come out that bitch with a skirt on. And even when you come out of there, a man, and you had the skirt in there, that shit gonna follow you, bro. You know what I'm saying? The gangsta, some of the gangsters dudes I know, we just being real. This is a podcast. I'm going to get to y'all raw. You know what I'm saying? Some of these dudes that's gangsta out here, they ain't gangsta in there. Some of them dudes that's slanging iron out here, when they get in there, they be straight bitches. They just being real. Like, I done been locked up with a mall. See murder. I done been locked up with Boosie. You see what I'm saying? So, it's just like, you know, you got certain stuff that you do. And that you don't do and you know what I'm saying? It's gonna reflect when you go in jail, bro. You gotta be a man, a grown man. Yeah. So if you grown enough to slang iron, don't be telling on your partner. <laughs> when when the people get y'all and investigate, you wanna tell everything. No, stand on that shit. Don't get that man got a family too, what you telling for? You just killed the you know what I'm saying? You was with him, you got caught. Don't tell. Keep it real. That means just be real. Yeah. Now okay, so if I do something, we gonna kill somebody. We 19 years old. I get caught. Right? Yeah. You shot the dude. Mm -hmm. I tell on you. But I get caught. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We both was together. We knew what was going on. Yeah. What I'ma tell what I'ma tell on you for? Why 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 would we even do this? Why would yeah. KG be like, hey bro, we really wanna do this? <laughs> we gonna talk about it now, yeah. cause we grown like bro, we really wanna go kill this dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they don't do that. They gonna run and tell, they're gonna they're gonna tell the people. You know what I'm saying? So when you do what you got to do, bro, just do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? My advice to the kids, just leave the violence alone, bro. You know what I'm saying? Go to school. Go to church, bro. It's cool being a square. I love being a square. I used to be a gangster, bro. Big old gangster, bro. In the gym. I, like, I'm, I'm cool with being a square, bro. It's okay, bro. It's okay to go home. Chill, you know, sit back, you know, watch TV, <laughs> play the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, first five, like, I might want to go to first five, but you know what I said? You know what? It's too much going on because I'm grown now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why am I, what am I outside for, bro? 41 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But see, what, what happened was I got all my 20s and 30s taken away from me. So my mind, like, I could get up and go, right? I could go run. 20, 30 minutes right now, just take out running. Because mm -hmm. my mind's still yeah. young. You yeah, see what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So now I done, I done developed, I'm growing now. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I left so young, and in my mind, I'm like, man, I'm still 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I first come on, you can't tell me nothing. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? But, but now it's like, damn, Q, you getting old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't be at no club, bro. You need to be at a bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. 
Hey, bro, it's just it's just a growth thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? For the kids, just just let it go. How, how, how was your transition coming home? Like, like missing all that time? Like you saying, like even the trees grew, everything around you was different. Like everything looking smaller. Like your transition. Like how long did it take you to actually get back into the swing of things from being locked up for so long, then coming back home and everything changed and you gotta adapt to everything. I ain't gonna lie, dog. I had a phone, my last, what, three, four years? Yeah. <laughs> I had a cell phone in there. So I was already in tune to what was going on. You know what I'm saying? I read books, I wrote music. That what kept me going, you know what I'm saying? I blocked like, bro, I could be in my bed on the phone. Like, dudes be having phones, talking to their females, you know what I'm on the, on the phone doing? Yeah. Looking up how to, how to make this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How to do this, like stuff I ain't never thought about, how to do this. How to make this, how to create this. I'm in my phone looking at that. I ain't in the phone worrying about no females on Facebook and TikTok. I'm trying to learn how to, you know what I'm saying? So the transition went that hard because when I came home, I had these two. You know what I'm saying? They made it so like, hey, you here go this, you scrape. You see what I'm saying? Got me a job, took me shopping. They did what they were supposed to do. That's my cousins, you see, my blood. Like, they did my brothers, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't hard at all, you know what I'm saying? But... The transition gonna always be hard when dealing with the trans. The only thing that was hard was seeing these hot new people move. Mm -hmm. See, back when I was born, when I came before I went to jail, we used to we used to fight. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, <laughs> niggas ain't doing that. <laughs> they ain't doing that. Like they see a big old, you know, yeah. they big old nigga walk up, man. What up? Yeah. Like I'm used to them. Yeah, yeah, we gonna they ain't doing that no more. So. I had to learn it. I saw that in there, cause tell them, you got it, young. <laughs> yeah, like you got it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you see, you can see it in jail though. Like the trend, like the world was changing because, like you know, you wear world clothes in jail. Yeah. In some prisons, in some places in Louisiana, you wear blue jeans. You had your shoes, everything. So it went from you know we wearing baggy pants. Now these niggas coming to jail with skinny jeans yeah. on. <laughs> so you got these. Old niggas that been locked up 50, 60 years, they looking like, man, why, why y'all still wearing them pants <laughs> like this? You feel me? You know they too shit. Yeah. So they on some, you know, on some booty please. band and you know, some fleece <laughs> jerseys. So, you know, they looking like, damn, why these niggas wearing these tight pants? But when I'm looking on the phone, I'm looking at NBA young boy. They wearing, you know, that's the that's, that's, that's swag now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was like, and then like, they really slang an iron in jail too. I ain't no out here. Like them little dudes that come to jail, that's young, that's doing it out here. Some of them, they come to jail and slang and you gonna see that. So it wasn't nothing, it ain't nothing, bro. It's, it's the same thing in prison. Like dudes have nine fights. So it's the same thing as a gun fight. Stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? As long as you stand out the way, stand to yourself, applying yourself, you ain't gotta worry about nothing. I, I could go there, I feel like, Right now, you could drive me in any hood in America, bro, and I'm going to walk out that motherfucker. Yeah. Real shit. You know why? Because I know how to stay to myself. I know how to mind my fucking business, and I'm going to stand on that shit if any nigga fuck with me. Real talk. That's just being real. I'm the basic laws, bro. Mind your business. <laughs> apply yourself. Stay to yourself. And stand on our team when it's time to stand on our team. It's something. You know what I, what I think? Not just being from Ray, but this whole area, right? Where we from, we really, we really the country. So we had a benefit that some city people don't have. We get to learn all the characters at a slower pace. Mm -hmm. So when you when you got there, you knew who was real, who was fake, who you need to watch, who you don't. So we get to learn that at a slower pace without dying. Used to be. Yeah. Now no. it's more like the city, so they. They key, but we came up during the time where you can learn. You can learn characters. Mm. And I always say you can take a care from where we from. I just said it though. Yeah. A dude from Areva or Tallulah. You can see him why, go see him in St. Louis somewhere. Yeah. Everybody love him. They they run it thing because yeah. so them simple things right yeah. there. You're gonna stay to yourself. You born with some southern hospitality, mm -hmm. so you're gonna speak to people when you see them looking at yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It takes you and you respect. We respect everything. Yeah. Everybody. That's just the sound. <laughs> you that's that's how that's how that go, yeah. whether you whether whatever your sexual preference is, your religion, whatever, yeah. we gonna respect you. Mm -hmm. Right? Cause we cause we we want you to respect us. Right. And most of the time you ain't getting out of line, we not finna bother you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So those principles, 
helped you, I, I believe, well, I know they did, helped you through that. It's going to help you in life on through. And now you got the concept of figuring out how much time there is in taking a moment mm -hmm. of your time. It's, you, you just said you ain't gonna put nobody else in position of your time no more. That's it. So, if you had the concept then to take a minute, like you just said, hey man, we really wanna do this. The, <laughs> right. the, the new world is pushing everybody to not be still and not think. Mm -hmm. So, if I had advice for any youngster, it would be, hey man, take a sec. When you hear something, most of the time your radar say, man, that sounds crazy. That's, that's you. But you wanna act, you wanna mm -hmm. go, because everybody, you, I need to go, I need to go, we on go. This, uh, take you a second. Actually, because you ain't thinking about it before you shoot, dude. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, is you ready? If you're 19, you don't even know what 20 years is. You was 19, they told you 25 years. It ain't nothing you can do outside of thinking about a movie when they say 25 years later to yeah. compute what that is in your head. Yeah. You can't. But you can by taking one little old second. There's so much time in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's yours. It's your time to take and be like, nah, I ain't going to do that. Like he just said, you, you got a young blood. Is it worth it? Take that, take that time, cause, cause one second can save you. What you, what your boy rap she said, it can save you life. Yeah. It can save you seventeen years. Yeah. It can save you. <laughs> it can save you a ten minute argument with your old lady. Yeah. That can seem like it's fifty years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> one second. <laughs> one second. That's the key to the segment today. Yeah. One second. One take second. One second, bro. That's and and when you yeah. learn how to kind of meditate on time, spend the time with yourself. You can make that second really feel like you just said. I used to do five years at a time. My mind, man, I I can be riding and go off into a little meditative state, and I might be in it for ten seconds. It can feel like three, four hours. Oh, yeah. You can you can refresh yourself. Mm -hmm. You can let all that any tension or anger go. You know what I'm saying? Our dad has taught us that too. We we just didn't know it. Hey, uh, dad, I can ride now. I'm gonna take a ride yeah. right quick. How many times we can y'all came to my yeah. house? And both walking back yeah, here back there by uh, alone by itself Go sit down. with a shovel. You know what I'm saying? Taking time to sell, to 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 vent, to get this world off. Nova, because if you react and you a man, hey, it can it can get you in some trouble, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm happy you learned that that concept, man, of, of how valuable your time is. It ain't, no, it ain't for nobody. We we might have helped you as much as we did, but we ain't did nothing day in the you know what I'm saying? Y'all, 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 y'all didn't do it, but y'all did it because it yeah. impacted y'all too. Yeah, you see what yeah, I'm saying? It, it definitely impacted you know? us. Yeah. So like, you know, like you just said, it's one to take one stick, even if it take a fucking minute. Sit the yeah. fuck down because you got 24 hours in a fucking day. <laughs> yeah. Sit your ass down for five minutes. Yeah. And whatever it's gonna take yeah, for you, yeah, just yeah. sit down and think. You got 24 hours in a day, bro. Sit down and think about what you finna do before you do it. Cause this shit gonna save you a lot of fucking time, bro. And some time you ain't ready for, bro. Real talk. Yeah. And, and, cause it worked two ways, right? Take take some time to let emotions settle. We we talked about the, we talked about the concept of would you open a drink after you shook it up? Right, versus letting it sit for about five minutes, you can open it, it ain't gonna explode all over well, the place. Just pop one. You just pop one. <laughs> this this is how <laughs> this is how it works against you. When you going through something, man, think about it. Really think about it. Most of the time you going through a bad point. I am sick for a week. You we act like it's the worst thing. And you've been healthy for thirty five years. Right, right. You get sick one week, you ready to give you it ready up. To give it up. <laughs> that time don't add up. Right. So this concept, our concept of our time for real. Most of the time, you're going through something adverse. People want it's all kind of stuff people go through. Depression, why they want to kill themselves. Right. If they really took the time to step back and look at it, like man, you know what? I had one bad week out of the whole 2024. Right. Who am I? <laughs> you, right. you know what I'm saying? Them seven days. Don't let don't let two or three days of adversity put you under. Mm -hmm. Got so much more life to live. You know what I'm saying? So take start start valuing time. Your time. And we say it all the time, bro. Hey, man, take it. If, if Noah about to do something, hey, man, he get excited, he's yeah, going to tell you, hey, take your time. It a lot, but do we really dive into that concept? Yeah. Take your time. It's yours. <laughs> it don't belong to nobody else. Nobody with you. Take it. You know what I'm saying? Take that five minutes if it's going to save you getting expelled from school. Or it's going to save you from dude just punched you in your eye in front of a lot of people. You saw the video. I'm going to run home right now, go get it, or go to the car and get it. I'm going to act right now. Might want to take some time, bro. It, it ain't as bad as it seems, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, or you'll be looking at it 20 years later and you still locked up or you gone. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I, I grew up in a funeral home. My uncle owned a funeral home for 40 years. I ain't never seen nobody come back, ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never, nobody. People that love me to death, if they could come back, they might. They, it, it, don't it don't happen. So value your time, your life. Value how much time it is in a second. For sure, for sure. Once you in there, you ain't fuck, you ain't fuck. Oh, uh, Dorothy, whoever your mama name state. is. You go for the state of Louisiana. <laughs> you on to the state. <laughs> All the United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mr. Jones, you got anything? Yeah, you got anything, Mr. Jones? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Shout out to Poncho. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the only thing we got from our dad is, you know what I'm saying? We, what? We're cute now. Sweat. Nah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we. Yeah. Hey, man, you know, I, 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 man, I, I'd have had my chance, you know, through playing ball and traveling to different places, man, and buying this and getting that. I'd have found that, hey, bro, at the end of the day, all I need is a good pair of boots, good pair of jeans, and a fitted, man. That's it. You know what I'm saying? My head too big for fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, like, oh, chores and what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, good, good pair of boots, man, and a good fitted dude, and, and says a lot when a man got a good pair of boots, you know? And, and when I think about my uncles, daddy, man that, uh, that, uh, that I that grew up around, they always had a good pair of boots, good firm handshake. But back to your question. The advice I would give is, man, be okay with being different, bro. Just really being okay with being different, whether you the nerd and 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 you love the books and you love the science, you love the technology, but you do things like that really, really well. Be okay with being different, man. When I look back on my life and I just really start to sit down and reflect and think, that was the thing that separated me. Whether I was in middle school looking like Urkel with the glasses, you know what I'm saying? Daddy messing up, daddy messing up my hair, he yeah. cut my hair. Right. You know, when I got in high school, running with the strength shoes, the parachute. Bro, even when I got into college, I didn't realize that, but a lot of my partners reminded me, bro, when they would go out late at night, man, I'd be like, man, I'm about to go to the gym, dog. About to get an extra couple sets in, bench pressing, whatever. And even when I got to the league, it was one of the things that separated me because I was just different on how I operated, not just on the field, but off the field. How I treated people, how I talked to them. And really, anytime I started to venture off and get off track, you know what it was? It was me trying to keep up with everybody else. Yeah. Anytime I look at when I started to really get off, bro, it was because I was trying to be like everybody else and do everything else they was doing. You can't compare no F-250 to no BMW. F-250, F F if I need to haul up a trailer and pull it, we're going to yank it up, we're going to do it. That BMW, it ain't going to be pulling no trailer. It ain't going to be pulling. But I tell you what, if I need to get the zero to 60, <laughs> yeah. that could be up for debate, depending yeah, on what type of diesel right. you yeah. got. Yeah. <laughs> But if I need to hit that corner, though, you know what I'm saying, maneuver, boom, 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 like, there's a need for both. Mm -hmm. So asking yourself the question, man, what's what's something cool and special about you that makes you different and unique and continue to operate out of that uniqueness because that's what's going to separate you. Just being okay with being yourself and being, being different. Because the world always going to pull you and tell you, hey, go this way, do this, dress like this, move like this. And quite frankly... If you if you always trying to go and march to the beat of the march to the beat of what the world is trying to tell you to do, bro, you're gonna be confused, you're gonna be yeah. all over the place, you're gonna be like, man, I don't know. But just really saying like, hey man, this is who I am, this is what I do. And I ain't going with the crowd. And sometimes the people that's closest to you I ain't gonna like that. Sometimes your closest partners or your friends that you think that's closest to you. They ain't gonna go with that. They gonna separate themselves from you. But you know what's gonna happen though? What's that? You're gonna meet new friends that that, that like science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're gonna meet new friends that like to read books. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're gonna you're gonna bring in newer friends doing what you like to do. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Like I ride four wheelers now. Mm-hmm. I got new friends now. Really? <laughs> they don't do nothing but that. Yeah, yeah. four wheelers. They do what I like to do. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So whether you a nerd, but you whatever. Like four wheelers, you want to ride horses? Yeah. You know, you like don't find friends that like to yeah. do that same thing. So them old friends that. That don't want, oh man, look at the, look at the nigga, he doing this. Yeah. Man, I ain't fucking with that nigga. No, you gonna see who your real friends is. Cause yeah. your, a real yeah. friend gonna say this. Damn, done. You ride, you ride horses now? Oh, let me go, man. I'm, man, let me go get me a horse. Yeah. He ain't gonna be like, man, this nigga here, no, he ain't trying to ride no horse. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's just real. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're gonna meet new people, bro. It's, yeah. And it's okay. It's okay for them not to like you. Cause if they don't like you, you ain't doing something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why would I want to? I, I want people to hate me, hate on me. Yeah. That's gonna motivate me to keep doing what I need to do. I mean, I'm doing something right, bro. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't thought you wasn't gonna. Huh? Sometimes just you find your lane, and sometimes like we grow up, you switch lanes. You, you, you find switch. your purpose. Find Everybody your purpose ain't gonna yeah. lead them the same mm-hmm. way. You exactly. Yeah. Sometimes you grow up. You know, people go out of people. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You grow up. You learn different, but down there you gotta love me different or hate me. You mm-hmm. just you feel me? You just on two separate paths right That's now. It. Yeah. If it's yeah. gonna follow me back up, if not, you know, bless. Cool. Like, the best. I, I mean, still see you. Hey. Yeah. What it is. But they don't move like that yeah. no more. People. The circle. The circle's supposed to get better, bro. Yeah. If, if, if we all do a life with each other. Man, we probably got stages where we with each other. We probably doing a little foolishness, acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? You had your moments, but then as you evolve and grow and, and age through life, we supposed to be getting better. We supposed to be making each other better. We actually supposed to be demanding more out of each other for each other to be better. Yeah. Because we got purpose, bro. There ain't nothing in this world that don't got purpose to it. So how do you tell, my question is to all y'all then, how do you tell the youngster that, to get them to understand that part of the game. Like, how could you tell the youngster, hey, it's so cool, it's it's cool to, to have this mindset right now at a young age? I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you, well, first of all, you shown by us doing stuff like this, by us, Elgar out here in his, in his boots, me right. showing them we got we got a farm back here right. mm-hmm. and telling them how we got to it because cause everybody's visual learners now. Right, right. I can, I can let you know that either you're going to define yourself or the world going to give you a definition. Mm-hmm. So my, my definition, and I always been with Edgar talking about, a cool nerd who country, it ain't stopped. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, still what I, that's still what I do. Trying to, trying to be what people want you to be or make you like a race car. It, it only, all they do is go in circles. Mm-hmm. All that power, million dollar car, don't do nothing make left turn all day. Yeah. Imagine that car free out on the road to do what it's built what it's built to do for real but it can't because who is pleasing the crowd yeah all the crowd want to see you do it make that circle Woo! everybody looking at you make that circle make that circle that's all so either you're going to be entertainment for somebody or you're going to be what you want to be you're going to do what you yeah. want to do <clears throat> man that, look there once was this i'm gonna take y'all on storytelling okay. <laughs> <laughs> Story. Yeah, it is stories. Look, man, once was this, this 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 daddy sitting out of his house. His daughter pulled up to the house. She get out of the car. She come over to him. She said, hey, I need for you to talk to your grandson about why he shouldn't eat sugar. <laughs> so the daddy looked at his daughter. He said, all right, come back in about three months. She's like, three months? All right. Boom, she take off and leave. Three months pass. She pulled back up to the house. She get out of the car. Grandson get out of the car, he take off running over to his granddad. Him and his granddad are sitting out laughing the clown because they ain't seen each other in a long time. They talking about football, they talking about school. Granddad take a couple dollars out of his pocket, slide it to him, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now the daughter's sitting there cause she mad, cause she want him to talk about eating what? Not eating what? Sugar. sugar. Not eating sugar. So she kinda look at him a little bit. He catches his eyes with her. He gets down on his knees and he says to his grandson, Hey, Papa need for you to stop eating sugar. So grandson look at his granddad, he's like, all right, Papa, took off running. So the daughter looked at her dad and she's like, why did it take you 90 days to say something to him about not eating sugar? Daddy kind of sit back for a second, cross his legs, he say, hey, I first had to stop eating sugar. (laughs) (laughs) The best and the most effective message is the one you live. Mm -hmm. Because when you 
when you give a good message, but you ain't leave, you not living it, you confuse people. Mm -hmm. Man, I had a weight room coach, bro, used to talk to me about why I should look, work out, why I should be running extra sprints, why I should be doing push-ups, squats, and staying in shape. Mm -hmm. That's a valid reason. I'm here playing football. Man. But every time he talked to me about why I should stay in shape, he eating 20 piece nuggets. <laughs> he got a vanilla shake. I ain't never seen him get in the gym. So lead by example is basically what Live the mean. message, bro. Live yeah. Just live it first. You know what I'm saying? Live it first. It's uh it's so important by just living it. And that in itself has its own impact on it. Cause you thinking like, think about I me, mean, people we've seen that's been a, a man or a woman, a few words. Mm -hmm. But they living it out though. And you see them, you be like, dang, man, they really, they doing that. Mm -hmm. So just really, I would say that, man, just by us first living the message mm -hmm. and by being organic by how we live it, not just doing it because we want people to see it, but that's just we living the message. And then when we're going to go speak and talk to them about something, typically that message is a lot more received because they seen us live what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they can tell. Because this world has made them more visual, more visual learners than ever. We didn't have that much visual stimulus as far as look, having this phone in our hand to look at it all the time. Right, yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? We People could talk to us more because we, we hear our parents always talk to us. We ain't had no tablets, stuff. We was outside. Now, we came and got our visual right. from, from seeing stuff out here, but they're visual. So yeah. they, if you're not really living like that, they going to know it. You can't you can't fool these <laughs> these youngsters, man. They gonna know it if you authentic or not. Yeah. So so like you said, man, the best message you can you can give is the one you live for sure. So that's why I'm saying we don't really have to tell them much or nothing. We're gonna talk to them, but we let them see it first. You know what I'm saying? You know it. You know somebody fake. You know if somebody now you can learn from people that's doing the wrong stuff, but you just take it better when. I like ever said, Coach Smith come tell us, hey, you want to you want to try to get big, you better. I'm gonna listen because that boy <laughs> in the back of that boy yeah. shirt I always bucked. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so. <clears throat> got anything else? Talking to you, Mr. Brown. You the star, Fred. Yeah. Oh, you talking to me? You know I mean, you know, you touched upon a lot of stuff, bro. It's just, it's it's serious out here, man. Oh, uh, shout out to the two babies that died in Ray with two. You do Definitely. that on their service today. So Condolences. Yeah. Today. Um, shout out to the families, man. Y'all stay strong. You know. Oh, uh, but nah, bro. It's just it's just a lot, man. We I'm looking at this good knuckle here here. He done rolled up. <laughs> he on his own now. I'm on, on his own, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's crazy, bro. We getting old. Getting wiser, though. With age comes, man, I, you know, with age we and wisdom. <laughs> yeah, bro, it's it, it's actually a privilege. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Getting newer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we ain't never been whatever age yeah. we are today. Yeah. We ain't never been there before. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the newer you get, the more you evolve. Hopefully we imparting it on these mm -hmm. cats coming behind us. Because, again, they visual. You just yeah. said your son been watching you. Try to head, but try to walk like you. You know what I'm saying? Stuff. Sit in the car like you. CJ do it all the time. The way he put his seatbelt on. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm bobbing my head a certain way, I, I look over there. He be trying to, <laughs> trying to get on to it. Right, so right. Just be the example, man. Uh, one second. One second for sure. <laughs> Value how much time there is in taking a second. Out of 24 man. hours, bro. That's big. Out of life. Because, <laughs> because, because. Really, really, what that second does, it makes it about right now. I, I ain't gonna go too crazy because we'll be another hour, but right now is really all you got. You got right now in the past. Right. Future don't exist. If it do, take a breath from the future right quick. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. So what taking that moment you does. You see how he be saying that then. That's the nerd, bro. <laughs> taking that moment puts it about right now. Right. And, and what you do right now sets up your next right now. Mm -hmm. So you want it to be a, a next right now or wrong now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what's going to yeah, make yeah, yeah, yeah. it. So bathe that time and take yeah, it a second. Uh, be the message that you give and live it. Y'all stay real. It's been another episode of Lit Code and we out. Yep.